And what do we have here? Alright, so for the record, that was the first monarch I've seen in my yard this year, and it is May 25th today. That's the earliest I've seen some monarch activity since I've been doing this. And he or she was over here by this milkweed. I think it's a she. Because she seemed very interested in it. And I think I can already see an egg right there. Oh yeah. May 25th. And we already have an egg. I'm going to have to check the rest of these plants. There's an egg. And there's an egg. Oop. There's another. There's a pug. There's an egg. Oh, it's on. Hello, Monarch enthusiasts. I'm Rich Lund, and it's 2019, May 25th, 2019 to be specific. And as you can tell from the opening of this video, Monarchs are here in Michigan. Since I started doing this in 2011, this is the earliest that I have ever seen a monarch in Michigan personally. I know they've been here earlier than that, but still for me personally, this was an awesome day to wake up and find one in my yard. And in addition to that, I checked the milkweed plants that are just starting to sprout in my yard, very young leaves, and there were a total of 14 eggs laid on them. Now, I don't know if it was that monarch that laid them, I don't even know if that was a male or a female, but still, this is awesome and encouraging. And it's right in step with the exciting news that the migratory population has significantly increased since last year. Each year, monarchwatch.org releases a beautiful graphic display, bar graph style, of the population status of the monarch from year to year. These bars represent the migratory population as measured by the amount of area in hectares that they are occupying as they overwinter in the forests just nearby Mexico City. And with the 2018-19 winter seasons data put in here, we have a significant increase in the population. Very encouraging. I was pleasantly surprised and very excited to be wrong. This was definitely the opposite of what I had predicted. But keep in mind, I'm kind of a numbers guy. And last year when I made the 2018 population status video, well, I was making that prediction based upon what the patterns in the trends of the data was, was saying, was showing. And you gotta admit, when you look at the data, the rises and peaks, and then the drop and falls that it has going on, it definitely looked like next year there could be another relatively new low set. When the population has a new relative peak, well then it's one, two, three years later that a new relative low seems to happen. You can see that trend in the data is usually what ends up happening. But this time around, that didn't happen. So what can we glean from this? What can we learn? How might this be interpreted? Well, the first thing to learn is don't pay any attention to my predictions. <laughs> I was just looking at trends in the data, and obviously there's many other significant variables that can cause a rise or a fall in the population. When it comes to these variables, Dr. Chip Taylor of monarchwatch.org, he knows a lot of them and watches those very closely. And he called this one. He had predicted last year, well before any of the information was announced, that there would be a increase in the population size, and he predicted, uh, according to the hectare data, that it would be above five hectares. Bravo, Chip. You definitely know your stuff. If you want some quality information on these variables and how they are interpreted, how Chip's able to make those predictions, then I really encourage you to check out his population status section of the monarchwatch.org website. He has posts on there that are incredibly interesting, very much worth reading, and highly educational can really paint even more of a picture as to what perils are out there for the monarch butterfly and what things can affect the population size. But what else can this increase? 6.05 hectares, what else can it show us? Okay, to really know how this fits into the grander picture, we need, of course, some years after it in order to best interpret it. So what follows is just conjecture. But let's look at some of the possibilities. In last year's 2018 population status video, I talked about the normal rise and fall that many populations can experience, whether they're monarch butterflies or otherwise. 
and that when it comes to the monarch butterfly population, we should expect that there will be rises and falls. But if we want to know if the population overall is starting to recover or not, the indicators for that are going to be the relative highs and also looking at the relative lows. Both the relative highs would need to be increasing and the relative lows would need to be increasing before maybe it's time to officially celebrate. So, is 6.05 the new relative high? The answer is a very encouraging, exciting, very pleasant, probably. Again, we don't get to fully know until we get at least next year's data too. But here's some really good news that goes alongside that. I say probably, but if we're wrong and it's not the new relative high, that would only be true if next year's data is even higher, which would only be more encouraging. We'd have to know a few years past this 6.05 hectares in order to really make the official call, but let's go ahead and assume that it is the new relative high. If we assume that, then that means that this new relative high is higher than the most recent relative high, which took place in the 2015-2016 season. Yo, understand, that hasn't happened in 15 years. This is very encouraging. Now don't pop the corks on the sparkling grape juice just yet. It is still a possibility that if we see like, for example, next year's data and it's significantly low, lower than the 2.48 that we had last year, it could just be that this most recent season's data was an anomaly. But still, that's a relatively low chance of that being the case. And so it's very exciting news, and it's, it's where I'm willing to be conservatively optimistic about it. Kind of like that phrase, conservatively optimistic. You are welcome to be conservatively optimistic along with me. Now, the next question, definitely worth asking. Was last year's 2.48 hectares the new relative low? Truly, we can't answer that question yet without at least next year's data. Say, for example, next year's data is lower than 2.48. That could happen, so brace yourself in case it does. After all, if you go back to 2003-04, that season's data of 11.12 hectares, the next year it dropped dramatically to 2.19 hectares. So it is possible that such a drop could happen again. I'm not predicting that, I'm just pointing it out, it's a possibility. And if that does happen, and next year's data is below 2.48, then looking at the batch of years there that have happened most recently, 2.48 would not be the relative low. But let's pretend that that doesn't happen, because it's not that high of a likelihood. If next year's data is still above 2.48, whether it's higher than 6.05 or not, then that would mean that 2.48 hectares from last year was the new relative low. And that will be incredibly exciting. Just how exciting is that? Think about this. In the years that this data has been compiled, there has never been a time where the relative low was higher than the previous relative lows. This would be the first time ever. That's incredibly, incredibly encouraging. So, this is really awesome news. The data looks very promising. And again, I just saw some of the earliest eggs I've ever seen since I've been doing this. This is very encouraging that the population might be starting, starting to recover. But that means we still have a lot of work to do. Now with all that in mind, What's this season going to be like here for Raising Monarchs? Well, I've got some goals. One of those goals, there's going to be an episode where we get to talk about the Endangered Species Act and whether or not the monarch butterfly belongs on that endangered species list. There's a lot of opinions out there. I've got one of my own, but it would really take a full episode to talk about all the different angles to look at it from. There's some pros and there's some cons as to whether or not the monarch butterfly should be on there and what would happen if it was. And so it's definitely worth a discussion. Now, I thought this was going to be a lot more prominent of an issue this season because it was supposed to be announced June, which is just in a few days, of this year. But as of yesterday, the deadline for the announcement actually was pushed to December of 2020. But I still think it's a topic worth bringing up because, hey, in those two years, if we do enough work with enough milkweed, we could get the population to such a size that everybody agrees it shouldn't be on the endangered species list because the population will be recovering. This is going to be a very important year for the monarch butterfly and for us who are trying to help it out. That brings me to another major goal for this season. When it comes to the videos that have been made in this series after the first five parts, the core of the series, 
Those videos were usually chosen as far as topics go because questions kept coming up in the comment section that were pretty much the same question. That clues me into, hey, there's a topic that deserves some coverage. But looking now at kind of the series overall, in the last three years what videos have come out, it's mostly been about the monarch butterflies. People ask more questions about the monarch butterfly than they do about milkweed. And so with the series as a whole, it really hasn't talked as much as it should, I think, about milkweed and how important it is to be planting milkweed to help out the monarch butterfly. We're going to see some episodes that delve into that a little bit more. I think that that needs to be a louder message that these videos show you. And of course, in the mix of that, last year I did an AMA video request. AMA stands for Ask Me Anything. I had encouraged viewers to ask whatever questions they wanted to, but also to suggest some topics that could be covered in an episode. Certain things that maybe they'd like to see an episode about that hadn't been covered yet. And so we wound up with three major topics plus a bonus fourth that we'll be seeing episodes for this season. All right, I'm excited to start this season. The population has risen. It could be even higher next year. Let's get to work. And let's turn conservatively optimistic into confidently optimistic. And don't wait for the next video to tell you to do it. Plant milkweed. I'm Rich Lund. I'll see you next episode.